Every medical condition has an associated system that delivers care. But for any given condition, the systems of care in different communities or regions have tremendous variation in both clinical outcomes and cost. As you watch this post, I'd like you to think about how well the systems of care for various high-risk, time-sensitive conditions in your community or region perform in terms of both outcomes and cost. How effective are your systems of care for high-risk, time-sensitive conditions in resolving the acute clinical condition and then returning the patient to their pre-event health status? How efficiently do those systems of care utilize their finite resources to produce those clinical results? We need to think about both of these dimensions, the quality of care as expressed in outcomes, as well as what it costs to get those outcomes. The combined impact of quality and cost is called value. Value is getting a lot more attention lately as we seek to improve the overall healthcare system here in the U.S., and other countries are grappling with many of the same challenges. Some systems of care are very effective in treating a condition, but they're not very efficient. In other words, they get a good clinical outcome compared to similar communities, but at a much higher cost. Some are very efficient, but they're not very effective. In other words, they have a low cost, but do not provide good clinical outcomes. Here's the key point. The best systems of care do both. They have great clinical outcomes and do so at a low cost. The systems that get great outcome at a low cost are the best ones to study and benchmark. So let's consider a specific type of system of care. The archetype for high-risk, time-sensitive conditions is out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Now, there's an international consensus standard for how survival rates from out-of-hospital cardiac arrest are measured. The most common used metric from that standard is the survival rate for cases with an arrest of presumed cardiac origin with a witnessed onset and presenting in a shockable rhythm when a defibrillator is first applied. The out-of-hospital cardiac arrest systems of care with the best clinical results consistently get survival to hospital discharge rates in the 50 to 60 percent range, but what did it cost those communities to get those results? Cost of care calculations on individual cases can be quite complex. However, one way to consider at least the EMS phase of care is the total cost per capita that is spent to support the EMS system in a community. So suppose we have two communities with a 50% out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survival rate using the parameters I mentioned earlier. In one community, the annual cost per capita for the EMS system is $50. To quantify the calculation of value, we use the value equation. The quality parameter is placed in the numerator, which would be the survival rate as a percentage. And the cost parameter is placed in the denominator, which would be the annual cost per capita in dollars. That gives us 50 over 50, which gives us a value quotient of 1.0. Now, in the other community, they also have the 50% survival rate, but they operate more efficiently with a cost per capita for their EMS system of only $25. With 50 in the numerator and 25 in the denominator, we get a value quotient that's doubled at 2.0. They're doing just as well clinically, but with much better efficiency. This is a better performing system, yet the cost and value dimensions are not often considered by most observers. These sorts of value considerations are becoming a major factor in healthcare system policy. As the shift continues to take place from fee-for-service payment to alternative payment models using methods ranging from bundled payments to full capitation, the designs of our systems of care will be instrumental in making improvements in quality outcomes, cost efficiencies, and overall value. So, even if you have the best parts and connect them all together well, you might not have the efficiencies needed to provide the best value. The best of the best will do well in both quality and cost, which yields the highest value. And the pursuit of value is something we're all going to hear more and more about as our overall healthcare systems evolve. The healthcare industry has a long road ahead in developing standardized cost metrics to complement our standardized quality metrics. 
We need both of them to objectively measure value. Why is that so important? Because you can't effectively improve what you can't effectively measure. And we need to measure and improve quality, cost, and value across the entire system of care.